2023, a year where four ICC titles were on the line. The first of them was a first in itself, and India, led by Shafali Varma, were crowned winners of the inaugural Under-19 Women's World Cup. South Africa remained the stage as the juniors gave way to the seniors. The hosts had plenty to cheer. South Africa made it to the final of a World Cup for the first time in any format, but the Proteus couldn't prevent the inevitable, and Australia were women's T20 world champions for the sixth time. For Meg Lanning, it was a fourth T20 World Cup win as captain, but she stunned the world with a shock retirement at 31 before the end of the year. It took the advent of a whole new competition for a side led by Lanning to taste defeat in a final. Harmanpreet Kaur's Mumbai Indians pipped Lanning's Delhi Capitals in the crowning moment of the much-awaited inaugural edition of the Women's Premier League. For the men, a year where the focus, for once, was shifting to ODIs, gave us an all-timer of a test. New Zealand became only the fourth side to win a test after following on, and the second to win by one run as they edged England in a thriller in Wellington. An IPL season of record highs was headlined by a heist for the ages. Kolkata Knight Riders needed 28 from the last five balls against Gujarat Titans when Rinku Singh hit Yash Dayal for five sixes in a row. A long season concluded with a long final, finishing in the early hours of Tuesday morning, but with a fitting finale, Ravindra Jadeja hit 10 runs of the last two balls against Gujarat Titans to hand Chennai Super Kings title number 5 and MS Dhoni told us he will continue next year. India's T20 stars had to pivot back to red ball mode within a week with title glory up for grabs. But for the second time in as many editions, India faltered at the last hurdle of the World Test Championship. Australia had completed their set with a crushing win at the Oval, set up by the brilliance of Travis Head. It wouldn't be the only time this year Head caught India's tail in a big game. Australia would finish the English summer having retained the Ashes, which ended with the curtains coming down on one of the true showmen. Stuart Broad signed off in the most Stuart Broad way imaginable, hitting a six of the final ball he faced and taking a wicket of the final ball he bowled to win the test no less. One moment from the Ashes garnered more eyeballs and split more opinion than any other. Alex Carey became a supervillain after his contentious stumping of Johnny Pesto. It wouldn't be the most talked about dismissal of the year though. That mantle was saved for Angelo Matthews, who became the first batter to be dismissed timed out in international cricket in the latest chapter of Sri Lanka and Bangladesh's fractious rivalry. As we entered firmly into 50 over territory, West Indies had to contend with the ignominy of failing to qualify for a Men's World Cup for the first time. While the Windies wings were clipped, the dreams of the Dutch took off. Netherlands earned the 10th spot at the Men's ODI World Cup. Among the preparatory series and tournaments ahead of the showpiece event was the Asia Cup, where the ground staff would be the MVPs, with weather forecasts in higher demand than match-up cards. It ended with India bowling Sri Lanka out for just 50 in the final, courtesy of Mohammad Siraj Sixfer. The World Cup kicked off in India in October, which shocks a plenty. Netherlands showed they belonged by upsetting South Africa in Dharamsala. Afghanistan proved how far they'd come with a campaign to remember, featuring wins over England, Sri Lanka and Pakistan. But there was possibly no shock as sensational as England's no-show. The attacking champions were humbled in what goes down as possibly the most dismal World Cup defence ever. Come November, Afghanistan came within touching distance of the implausible, only to be denied by the unimaginable. After posting 291, they had Australia on the mat at 91 for 7 at Wankhede, before Glenn Maxwell pulled off a Mumbai miracle. Cramped all over, barely able to move, Maxwell smashed 200 on a night when no other Aussie crossed 25. One week later, Wankhede would witness another moment in history. At Sachin Tendulkar's home, with the Sachin Tendulkar stand, the Sachin Tendulkar statue and the Sachin Tendulkar himself watching, Virat Kohli went past the master to stand on uncharted ground. 50 ODI hundreds. 
India got past a men's world cup knockout game for the first time in 8 years to set up their date with destiny. 10 wins in a row, India stood one step away from ending a 10-year wait for an ICC title. But that itch would remain as Australia, as promised by their captain on the eve of the final, silenced over 90,000 plus at the world's biggest cricket stadium to be crowned world champions for the sixth time. Player of the match with a thumping century? You guessed it, Travis Head. One month later, the stars of the final would climb celestial heights at the IPL auction. Matt Cummins became the IPL's first ever 20 crore rupee purchase, only for Mitchell Stark to go for nearly 25 crore rupees soon after. While the Indian men's team nursed its heartbreak, the women raised the roof to finish the year. The occasion of the first women's tests in the country in nearly a decade was celebrated in style. England were dispatched in what was the biggest win in women's test history and success the following week meant India had their first victory in the format against Australia.